Hello everyone, we will continue the topic parallel processing and we are doing the practical part of the same. And in the previous video, we simply call this function module inside the do loop. We pass the start date and end date. Yes, after that, we want the start date and end date of the next month. Then we call this function module. With the help of this function module, we are adding one day to the last date of the previous month. This is our last date, means 30th April. We added one day, so we got the 1st May. So this will be our start date. Then we are simply using this function module to get the end date of the May month. Now into this particular video, we will check in the debugging mode. Are we getting the data of 12 months? Yes. And yes, whenever we will proceed, I need to go for three to four code changes. But debugging is always the best approach. If I will blindly write the code, yes, it will not give the more expected answer. The clarity will be less, especially in these kinds of requirement. Develop something, check in debugging. Develop something, check in debugging. Those who think they are not good at logic part, this is always the best approach, especially in these kinds of requirement. Now we will check and parallelly we will do the code changes. So this is extremely important is yes? I will put a breakpoint because especially we will go for debugging, we will do the code change, we will go for debugging, we will do the code change. Now I will give the input, I will go to execute. I'll go to desktop 3, yes, most preferable desktop. So we have the 1st April 2024. This is our start date. We got the end date. This is our 30th April. Now we are going for do. We are passing 1st April to 30th April to this particular internal tape. Now we are passing this 1st April to 30th April to this function module. Based upon that, we got that data from VBAK table 122 records. If we will check in the table also, if I will go to VBAK table, we are going for 1st April to 30th April. 1st April to 30th April. This is 30th April. Number of entries 122. It's 122 means perfectly fine. Now, now we have the end date 30th April. Now we are calling this function module. We should get now 1st May. So this is our 1st May. Have you seen? We got 1st May. We have 1st May. Based upon 1st May, can we get the last date of the May month? Yes, if I will execute this function module, you can see we have 31st May. That's why I always prefer to use SAP function module if SAP has provided. Otherwise, if we will go for manual logic, we need to do so many permutation and combination because in May month, we need to go for 31 days. Yes. So we have 1st May and 31st May. So we have 1st May and 31st May. Now, do loop will come for the next time. First time done. Now, do loop will come for the next time. Now, now this logic will again execute. We have the start date. We have the end date. Now, into this internal table, if we will see, I told you based upon debugging, we'll go for the changes. Now, this should be the only record into this internal table because we already fetched based upon 1st April to 30th April. It means whenever we are passing that data to this internal table, whenever we are passing this internal table to this function module, we need to refresh this internal table. Because next time we need to go for 1st May to 31st May. 
we are not going for 1st April to 30th April again. It means we need to refresh this internal table. So I'll just go for refresh. That's why debugging is the most powerful tool. Especially for the freshers and beginners, this is the way to learn. I'll just go for different program. By mistake, I opened. This is our program. And once the topic will proceed, it is just like a mini project requirement itself. It is just like a project real-time requirement on which I work this. Now, we'll simply refresh this internal table. Please do not refresh after this. Otherwise, whatever you are appending, it will refresh and nothing will go to this particular function module. Now we will see. I'll again put a breakpoint and then we will go for next code change. I will run 1st April to 31st March 2025. So first time it was perfectly fine. So first time it is done. So I'll just do F8. Now I am on to refresh statement. Now, if we will go for this first time, it is 1st April to 30th April. We are passing it to function module. We got 122 records. Now we are getting the start date of the next month last date of the next month. Now we are calling it next time. Now it refreshed the previous data. You can see 1st April to 30th April refreshed. Now if I will go for this internal table into this internal table. Now we have 1st May to 31st. Now we have 1st May to 31st. We are passing it to this function module. Now it is returning. You can see now we have 215 records based upon 1st May to 31st May. If I will check 1st May to 31st May. Now we will go for one more port change after that. You can see 215, 215 record. Now, we'll understand. Previously, from 1st April to 30th April, we got some record. Yes, at that time, what was the number of record? If I will check, 1st April to 30th April. 30th April. Based upon 1st April to 30th April, we have 122 records. Now, we have 215 records. We need to add these two records, 122 plus 215. It means into this internal table, we are getting the records of one month, but we want to collect the data of all 12 months. It means whenever we are getting that data, we'll simply, simply append it to different internal table. We already have that internal table. I'll simply use this. Suppose if I'm executing, we need to add the data. We need to collect the data. If I will go to this particular program, you can see into this internal table, we are getting the records of one month, but at the last, we want the data of all 12 months. It means Whenever we are getting that data of one month, we'll simply, simply append it to another internal table. So I will write append lines of this internal table to LT underscore PPA. If you want to put a loop and append it to this internal table, that's also okay. If you know new syntaxes and if you want to use corresponding, you can go for that also. You can simply go for one statement. We are appending the lines of this internal table to this internal table. 
and I will simply refresh this. Because we appended it to this particular internal table. Now, this internal table we are displaying in ALVS. It means this internal table has the data of all 12 months. We'll check the syntax and we will activate it. Now we'll simply learn in the debugging mode. Now it will work for all 12 months. I'll put a breakpoint. I will run. 1st April to 30th, 31st March 2025. Now we'll first time call this particular function module. I'll just put F8. Now you can see first time. First time it is 1st April to 30th April. 1st April, 30th April, how many records we have? 122. We appended it to this internal table, 122. Next time we will call. Anyway, that's it. Breakpoint in the loop itself. So I'll simply do F8. Next time breakpoint stop. You can see this is 1st May to 31st May. We are calling this function module. We got 215 records. 215 will be added to 122. Now you can see into this internal table we have 337. Next time. Next time we are passing, you can see 1st June to 30th June. Because we have written the logic, we are getting the first day of the next month and last date of that month. Now, based upon this, we have now 105 records. If we will see, this is our 1st June to 30th June. This is our 30th June. We have 105 records. 105 records. We are adding. You can see in LTVPAK, we have 442 records. Fourth time, you can see. It is 1st July to 31st July. We got, yes, 151 records. We are adding. Now we have 593 records. Next time, if we will see, it is 1st August to 31st August. Now next time, it is your 1st September to 30th September. And you can see number of records are adding. At the last, we'll see. This is our 1st October to 31st October. This is our 1st November to 30th November. Now this is our 1st December to 31st December. Now you can see 2025 now we will get. That's why I'm going one by one. So we can understand are we getting 2025 or not. Now yeah, you can see. 1st January 2025 to 31st January 2025. Now you can see February month, 1st Feb to 28th Feb. That's why I used SAP function module. Now 12th time it will call. Now you can see it is 1st March 2025 to 31st March 2025. Now do loop 12 times term. Now it will not call that do loop again. We came out from that do loop. We prepared the field catalog. Now we have 959 records. And you can see we have 959 records. We'll see. If I will go for 1st April 2024 to 31st March 2025. Now we have 959 records. We have 950. So yes. But yes, what is the summary of this video? Then I will come on to the most important point. So into this particular video, what we did, we simply understood each and everything in that debugging mode.
based upon that, what the first most important point we did, we refreshed this particular internal table because the input is getting added. After that, whatever the one month data we are getting, we are passing it to final internal table because at the last we want the data of all 12 months. You can use append lines of syntax if you want to put a loop on this and append it to this internal table, it's also okay. If you want to use corresponding, that's also okay. Then I showed you in that debugging mode, everything is fine. But have you seen? As of now, we have not called this function module in new task. It is just assigned to one work process because we are going for sequential manner. 1st April to 30th April, 1st May to 31st May, 1st June to 30th June. We have not done the parallel processing as of now. We have not called this function module in new task. Yes, we called this function module 12 times but we need to assign it to different, different work process. How it will be assigned to new work process every time, whenever we will go for in new task, whenever we'll use starting new task, then it will be assigned to new work process. As of now, it is just working like previous thing. But the only thing is we have written the logic in the function model. This is the approach which I always recommend everyone to do. Once you are sure that everything is perfectly fine, then simply convert it to parallel processing logic. If at the starting level itself, you will go for parallel processing, the chances of mistakes are very high. So just check your simple understanding. Then in the next video, we simply call this in the new task because as of now we check that from the output perspective, we are getting the expected result. Whatever the necessary code changes are required, we have done that. Then we'll simply, simply do the code changes here. So that's it in this video. Thank you.